present to you James B. Madonna and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay, it just happens to be Sunday afternoon. No Sunday, Sunday, Sunday! November the 2nd, 2014, and what that means is, it is the Day of the Dead. Happy Day of the Dead to all of our Latino uh, viewers and fans. Let me salute you guys. And Mil Moscatus. Yeah, well, all the luchadors too. <laughs> sure, why not? Day of the Dead, happy Day of the Dead. Uh, I kind of like lump the three days together as my favorite holiday of the year. You got All Hallows Eve, okay, and then you got All Souls Day, which was my grandfather's birthday, God rest his soul. Uh, November, ah, the, November the 1st. Huh? All, all souls, and now he's re God rest his soul. God rest his soul. And, uh, Isn't yeah, that the and, day? and his shoes were always in good shape. He never wore out his soul. Isn't that the day that the souls come up and walk around, so to speak? To dance around and party? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, well, that's the day of the dead. It's, uh, I, I, I was attempt. I, I watched a good documentary on the history. Hold on. <laughs> on the history of the day of the dead mm -hmm. and it was in Spanish but I, I did see people dressed as Mayans, Aztecs doing a ritual so I, I assume that the origins of the the holiday they goes back to the ancient Mayans and Aztecs goes back to the, the, uh, the uh, beginnings of the Bible <sighs> It's witchcraft, it's sorcery, it's God does not like those things. Yes. Well, this is, uh, this is my, let me, I might as well introduce them now. Uh -oh. oh, oh, it's also election day week. Aha! Uh -huh. As aside from... Get your asses out and vote! Get the asses of the masses out there this Tuesday, November the 4th, and vote because it is your job and your duty and responsibility to vote as American citizens and if you do not vote you do not have a right to complain don't bellyache if you don't vote uh -huh. do it and um, um, yeah it's a, a, a very important uh, because those dirty rotten scoundrels those evil demons known as the, the Republican Congress, uh, are all running, from what I understand, and including uh, some senators? They want the Senate. They of course they want the Senate. Six to take it over. They want the Senate. They, you want, they want everything. Do you imagine what kind of a job they would do if they got the Senate? Oh, they don't do anything now, by the way. Well, uh, look, if you're low income or poor, and the you can kiss your ass goodbye. And if Republicans get the Senate, you can kiss your ass goodbye. Put your your head between your legs and kiss your ass goodbye. Well, theoretically, Ugh. Mr. Obama would veto such nonsense, but uh, with a corporatist, you cannot uh, rely on that. Yeah, but we want, in order for we the people to, to have a maybe a three-quarters of the way decent life three-quarters of the way decent life decent life you know we the, the less of the two evils have to be in full control of Washington the Democrats correct uh, even though I hate to say it you know, I know I, just like Jesse Ventura says I'm sick and tired of of settling for the lesser of the two evils but this is what you have right now until un you change the system until the system is changed right. and the progressive independents have a fighting chance Correct. to win but right now this is what we have 
So that's why I said three quarters of the way decent life. Well, remember, it's the, it's a fact of life. You're gonna get crumbs from the Democrats, but you'll get nothing from the rep. Hey, you know, I saw something. Uh, remember my uh, my statement the other day about to somebody. Just give me two two things that Republicans have ever done. To I you. didn't see any reply. Well, somebody put up a label with "Give me three things." Three things. Hey, you can go on to twenty things. I haven't seen one thing. It's, that's my point. <laughs> You ain't gonna see no things. I haven't seen. That yeah, the, the center of a bagel is what the Republicans <laughs> give. Give. Forget about just giving the poor, giving the middle class, giving exactly. the the mainstream masses. They they they're good at stuff in their own pockets. And you know, <coughs> hey, this actually goes. This actually goes back <sighs> to uh, before the Civil War when they when when they, when they the Whigs turned into the Republicans. They were they were kissing ass of the railroads back then, and the railroads were the biggest corporation in America at that time. Well, so the, this is nothing new yeah, for them. The trouble started with the Industrial Revolution. Yeah, well, that the, the, the railroads. Yeah, that's when you got that stuff. All right, I mean, me we gave land to the railroads. We gave everything to the railroads. You know. Yeah. Well, you know the term the term that should be changed. The term landlord should be changed because you don't really own your land. You 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 own the the, the building that it, that rests on the land. It sits on the land, right. but you don't own the land because they could take your well the, yeah. property away from you anytime. The land that was given to the railroads was from the federal government or the states. Confiscating. It was given land. to them. Oh, given. Given. You know? Oh, kind of like the the free uh, corporate welfare of today. I given, mean, given. The federal government also gave land to uh, settlers who would go out west and settle. You know, you have to be there for like five years. You have to turn in the crop, and and then the, uh, the homestead is free to you. I mean, they did that too. But you know, hey, talk about your uh, socialism. Yeah. <laughs> Let me get the formalities over with. Uh, formalities. Welcome everyone to Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth. I am your host, James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21, and I am here with my longtime co host and mentor and the founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977, the managing editor, the one and only, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling this week, sir? I'm starving, actually. Day of the Dead, a Day of the Dead. Well, I hope the mainstream masses are not uh, behaving dead this Tuesday, and I hope they really make it their business to go out, leave their homes, and vote. Yeah, because you know, a fortunate thing is uh, a lot of those states that were trying to put in um, uh, things and IDs and everything to stop, uh, yeah. you know, the. Uh, the women and the uh, blacks and the Latinos from voting, fortunately a lot of those didn't get through. So hopefully the turnout yeah. is adequate. Yeah, underhanded obstruction by the Republicans. Uh, they will st there, there is no low that they would not stoop to. Oh, by the way, how is, uh, I heard Hillary and Bill Clinton were out there campaigning. How is Grimes doing in, in Kentucky? Grimes is doing not too well because of her, she, you know, answer that she didn't vote for Obama. That seems to be playing well oh. in Kentucky. Oh, so, so, so when they call, if somebody says, well, Kentucky's a red state, then it's really a red state well, because not even red Grimes red. voted for Obama, which tells well, she me. she may have. Huh? She may have, but she won't answer. She said on principle, you know, it's a private vote. You don't have to oh, tell anybody. Oh, okay, okay. You don't have to tell anybody who you voted. And she it, is. It, it is she, very private. She yeah. is a um, an official in the state government over there. So I mean, she has a r right not to tell people whom she voted for. In other words, but she was a Hillary supporter. Like asking somebody, "Hey, who'd you vote for?" That's like that's almost as bad. Is asking somebody uh, how, how much, much do you, you make, make or what, what yeah. do you, what's your total savings come to? You know, yeah. you know. Uh, you don't have to answer those kind of no. questions. This is the last gourd. 
of the autumn season, the last of my three uh, uh, very weird, suggestive, strange, bizarre looking gourds. This is the most, this is the strangest one, the most uh, suggestive one, all the bumps and warts and everything. It's a gourd, it's in a squash family. I guess they would call it winter squash, right? Yeah. Uh very oh okay It'll make a great butt plug for uh, idiots it, no like, it looks like it has the two of them there the butt plug and the front <laughs> oh, <laughs> it looks oh, like I get they're it. both there you know yeah it's very 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 suggestive <laughs> like a sex toy I'm sure since Republicans are so stingy and cheap that the uh, conservative coven of witches from mm -hmm. Fox News would use that as a sex toy to save money all right it's a cat I knew it was him. You got, he's got that net. He was out last. He stayed out all last well, night. Why does he want to go out in this wind? I don't know. It's you the know. Other one is out too. You know that. Uh, you remember that old song, uh, the Edmund Fitzgerald. The Edmund Fitzgerald. What, was that uh, Gordon uh, Lightfoot? Gordon Lightfoot. Gordon Lightfoot. Yeah. Well, when he's when he sang the words, "The winds of November, November. come early," he's not kidding because it is early November and it is powerfully don't, windy out there. Don't forget the uh, marathon was today and this wind is going to play a part. Which one? The Boston Marathon? New York. Th they're out of their minds. New York. They're at 50,000 runners. Well, they're going to have to run their asses off if they expect to uh, keep warm. I wonder if they're running in shorts and t-shirts. I don't know. I don't know. But, I don't think uh, so. Well, really quick, <clears throat> I want to thank all of the uh, very talented entertainers that showed up last night for the uh, Ken Create open mic at the museum at the Patterson Historic Museum mm. uh, at 2 Market Street in Patterson, New Jersey, right next to America's newest national park, the Great Falls. Thank you for showing up. And thank you for your outstanding performance. And the video is now um, on the internet on YouTube. So what, just what about Facebook? It's on there too. All right, I'm gonna check it out tonight. Right. And then you you will see, can create and yours truly, uh, do our part together, our performance. I played my African djembe drum, and Ken did his thing. Okay, now. Before I begin, I um, re yesterday I received this automated, this uh, a political automated recording message yesterday, um, and it stated this is what it was about. It was a, a, a female voice uh, stating that it's critical to get out and vote on November the 4th, which is true, and um, we must send a message to Washington, which is also true, and send a message to the the Do-Nothing Congress, uh -huh. which is also true, but this is the part that confused me. Uh -oh. She ended with this statement, vote for the entire Republican ticket. Uh -huh. But they are the do-nothing Congress. Yes. It, it's not the Democrats in, in Congress. Well, that's what they're doing. They're doing that all over. Lie. They lie. Yes. Man. Yes. 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 This is a blatant lie. Yes. They are making like they are Democrats or something, you know? It, it, it It's not the Democrats that are do-nothings. This is horrible. All right. Here we got more political mumbo-jumbo coming Who's in the that? mail. Who's that? Ah, uh, Scott Garrett. Oh, get the rail rid of him. Cut that son of a bitch and thing up. Throw him in the Scott garbage. Garrett. I just want to read what he has to say. Yeah, read it. He, he looks like a like a like a troll, like a demonic. He's a conniving, sniveling. Yeah. You know that kind of a. Looks face. like a real douchebag, a sleazebag. Yeah. He's Republican. He's a sleazebag. He's Republican. Right. He wants to cut all the benefits, of course, That's for right. the poor. Uh, I am Scott. Garrett, quote, I am working on the big issues, 
and Ooh. the small issues that matter to our country. Uh, yeah, the issues that matter to the rich probably, and our communities also. Wow, because I know times are difficult for all of us. Hey, times are difficult for Scott Garrett. Did he mention any of the issues? No. No. Times are difficult for all of us, so he's putting himself Not in the, the same. Not the 20%. He's putting himself in the same category he belongs. as the poor and the mainstream. Exactly. The middle class. Well, he's a fighter for them, huh? Yeah, he, he's oh. fighting for you. Oh, yeah. yeah. And here it says, quote, America is a great nation capable of great successes and great compassion. Wow, Republicans have great compassion. Wow. You can't even get rid of uh, poverty. Come on. I'm, like, work great? I'm working to protect that for all of us. There, he, there he goes again, for all of us. The 20% don't need it. And then he goes on and on about creating jobs, cutting spending, protecting children. Yeah, cutting spending by get, uh, uh, taking food out of the mouth of poor children. How can Scott cutting Garrett social benefits. create jobs? Protecting Social Security and Oh, Medicare? that's a lie! That's a lie! Fix health care. How do you... He how hates do you, Obamacare. Cut it out. How could, he, how could a Republican Scott Garrett fix health care if, he, if he, doesn't, he doesn't want Obamacare, which is providing health care for the poor? Correct. That's and low, all we got at the moment. And low-income people. Right. Protecting our nation. From what? From our, our, our ISIS. Yeah, he mentions ISIS. Who he we give the weapons to and, and everything else which, to fight against us. Come on! Which the United States created. Exactly. Protecting Social Security and Medicare? That's the biggest lie there. Scott Garrett is working to protect seniors' benefits? That's the second biggest lie. He is opposed to any attempts to increase taxes on those benefits and will fight to protect protect every penny of your social security benefits? It's full of bullshit. I bet you went, I don't know if they had the vote yet, oh, God. but when they do have the vote to raise the social security tax, he'll be there. Believe me. Citizens, Garrett has a 96% lifetime rating by the Citizens Against Government yeah, Waste. Yeah, conservative. Citizens Against Government Waste and what is government waste to a, to a Republican? Food stamps! Food stamps, uh, 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 welfare, um, um, uh, Medicaid, um, any, any social program. They don't even like Social Security. So how could a Republican be protecting Social Security and Medicare if they want to do what the Koch brothers want to do? Exactly. And, and, and they have a 96 percentage, you know, for doing those and things. And eliminate it. And it's here. And you can take a look, look at this lying douchebag demon, Scott Garrett, his face. Oh, file, I'm filing it under G. I, I had to get it off my chest because... And, and because of gerrymandering, his, his, his district now covers uh, a whole bunch of areas. Even Bergen County, the 10th district. I think he's in the 5th or something of that nature. Come on, man. What I read before was pure, blatant lies by Republicans. Oh. Liberal policies mean... Uh, <laughs> oh, same another one, I think. Liberal policies mean bigger government, more Ooh. taxes, Ooh. and fewer jobs. Ooh. Do something about it. Vote Republican this Tuesday. Oh, yeah. Who's this jumbo? And here now? they have two uh, uncomplimentary photos of Barack Obama. Oh, Hillary. And that's Hillary? I think so. No, that's Nancy Pelosi. Well, who's voting for her? I don't know. Why is she all of a sudden... I don't know. I didn't think she was up for... Pe uh, uh, Teabaggers have been talking about Nancy Pelosi lately. Is she in the spotlight for any reason? Not that I know of. Okay, and then... Um, who's that guy over there? That's supposed to be Obama. No, right there. Oh, that's Christie. That's... Uh, oh, Lord. Balloon Boy. Okay. Liberal policies mean bigger government. Okay. Oh, but Pentagon policies don't. 
No, more ta uh, more taxes. Uh, oh, the poor. They want to tax the rich. Isn't that pathetic? Is it? Well, we, it when we were taxing them ninety one percent. Oh boy, did we have a good time here in this country for fifty years or oh, sixty yeah. years? The economy Whoop was great. Do. Yes, peaches and cream. Oh yeah. The economy was great. All the jo all the American jobs were still in America. There was no outsourcing. It was it was prosperity. That's correct. So, and then over here, Christy. You could buy a house in the 60s for $12,500. Car. Now, under God's economics, guess what? What? Those standards would never change. They would never change. There would be no such thing as inflation and prices rising. We know what bold... Yeah, he's bold, all right. We know what bold Republican leadership can do for taxpayers. Yeah, shut up and sit down. <laughs> I'm, I'm imitating Chris Christie. Balance budgets without higher taxes. All right, blah, blah. Oh, without hi higher taxes? Now, how come the middle class is, is suffering with taxation right now? Because when the rich don't pay their fair share, yeah. guess who picks it up? Without higher taxes, yeah, without higher taxes on the rich, not not on on the mainstream. Don't call them rich. Call them those who can pay. Who can pay? Yeah, it's just that's how it was. That's how the income tax was established right. in this country in 1913. It's, it's just whatever. like we're not going to those who had the money. We're not going to use the word uh, uh, tax burden anymore. Exactly. Because it, if it, it under the progressive tax system, it's a fair tax system. That's great. Uh, here we go. Uh, less spending, more jobs, real property tax relief. Property tax relief? Well, property taxes usually goes for schools, and it's a local phenomenon. It's not federal. All right. And these, of course, are the people on the ticket that you do not want to vote for uh -huh. if you're a New Jerseyan. Jeff Bell, no. Scott Garrett, of course not. Kathleen A. Donovan, no. No! That woman is a demon! Oh, Christy left an automated message uh, uh, saying how wonderful Kathy Donovan is. She used to be the county clerk, uh, but she's got problems with uh, suing people with our money, our taxes, and uh, problems with money owes where it's going. You mean her legal fees? Yeah, her legal fees well, are paid Cr by us. Chris Christie was doing that. Of course, that's what he did. Yeah. Robert W. Avery and Bernadette Coughlin Walsh. No. Bergen County Freeholders. No, 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 no. No, no. As far as the Republican ticket. Don't touch that column. Don't touch that column. I'm filing this under G also. For garbage. For garbage. There it goes. Garbage. Okay, remember I told you the story about the gentleman, David, that had, was screwed over by welfare, you know, and uh, he had to jump through hoop after hoop after flaming hoop after flaming, flaming hoops. hoops. And, you know, for a lousy, stinking, despicable $140 a month. Mm. Well, there's a new system now. After he had a report to unemployment once for four weeks and show that he was looking for a job. Now he was sent to this place in Hasbro Heights, New Jersey called Care Plus and he's got to do it again. He's got to put down, he's got to write down three searches per uh, day yeah, yeah, yeah. for a week and then they gave him additional sheets. How much longer does he have to be harassed and persecuted? Continuous. Continuous. Harassed, this is this is um uh, this is wealthy republican war on the poor this is persecution of the poor this is harassment of the poor it goes on and on and thank, on you can thank clinton and newt gingrich for that changing welfare as we know it now there, there is a um, uh, um a silver lining on his cloud he did get a large increase in food stamps, but I guess they're making him suffer for it mm -hmm. because he's got to write down three job searches per day for a whole... Per for, day? Per day for a week. Well, you know... When that I, sounds like harassment to you. Back in the 1970s, right. 
74 to be specific. Yeah. Uh, I was on unemployment. Right. And if I'm not mistaken, we had we had to uh, verify six searches for employees. But that was probably for the month. Yeah, to me, this, not every day or this, every week. This is just blatant persecution and and harassment of the poor. That's what, yes, of That's course. That's what this is. The poor guy's got to do this. this but is, even besides that, we are in a recession where there are no jobs, and for the jobs that are available, there are three applicants for every job. That's it. Three. Well, it's actually more than sure that. Sure, it's more that's, than that. That's what uh, that's what Robert Reich says. Three. So no. I'll take his word on it. All right. Listen, people, I am convinced we are living in the end times, and the Republicans definitely are responsible for accelerating that. It is there is uh, there is class warfare, and but the poor did not start it. It's the rich conservatives that started it, and they are increasing. They're they're kicking up their harassment several notches as uh you just heard by uh about poor david and uh and uh, david does watch our show and i know i i had a meeting with him myself and william h morrow the third our our voiceover artist had a meeting with him and this is what he told us he showed us evidence too they are harassing him mm -hmm. shame on you state of new jersey uh uh welfare uh what is it what do they call themselves a, a, Health and Human so Board of Social Services yeah, yeah, or something? Board of Social Services. Something like yeah. that, yeah. yeah. Shame on you. And I know this is pure Republican. That fat, loudmouth, obnoxious gas bag, Chris Christie, that's behind this. There well, is no. Even if he's not behind it, he could change it. He could ask for changes. Well, if it's a, since this is a new concept that they're laying on people that are getting welfare and food stamps if this is new which it is then it's not getting any easier for them it's, they're making it harder for them and oh, what are they going to give them well okay uh in this case his food stamps are much higher than the uh the petty cash he's supposed to get 140 dollars a month which you can't live on no you have to be living with someone you gotta or be someplace, you gotta be you know? with family or yeah. yeah you gotta be with somebody even if you were um, a boarder and you were renting a room with roommates you can't pay for the room no where, where are you gonna get the money to pay for the room can't no you can't do it there is no trickle-down economics people I know you teabaggers refuse to believe it because I don't know why you're under some kind of a witch's spell but it's siphon up to the top 20% economics. Siphon up to the fat cats economics. There is no trickle down. Never happened. Never will happen. Was never meant to work. Forget about it. All right. Now let us sink our teeth into these readings for um, Election Day week and the Day of the Dead. Mm. I think it's... Um, Oh, uh, what the hell? I don't speak Spanish. Really. Ah. Dia la Muer Muertas, something like that. Dia. Well, anyway, no. D D. What is it? D O D O means God, no? no. Oh, D O. Day. What is day? Day is Dias, right? The dead. Muer la Muerta. Anyway, it's the anyway, day. Anyway, it's the day of the dead. We speak English here. Okay. Remember, conservative coven of witches the, on Fox, including that um, that the the dark-haired bitch. What the hell's her name? Kimberly. Dark-haired. The one that's yeah shooting yeah. her mouth off, telling, yeah, telling women to women stay home, vote, don't stay go home. out and vote this November fourth. Yeah, get pregnant, be in the kitchen, and and clean, and clean toilets, and get blowjobs. Sit on the gourd, Kimberly of Fox News. Sit on the gourd. <laughs> And it's got a lot of bumps for you, too, for extra pleasure. Nice butt plug. Look at all them bumps, man. All that all that extra stimulation. Hey, and it's got a big a big projectile, look, on top of the, uh -huh. on top of the, the scrotum. 
of, of the gourd. You see? You're not even looking. Oh, I, the I projectile, seen it. The, the little, the, the, the Well, where is that going to go? Per, protuberance. Where is that going to go? That's a, it's a clit rubber. The one you're touching right now is going in the ass right there, <laughs> and the other one goes in a cunt. <laughs> okay. Let us sink our teeth into these readings. <laughs> Perhaps he doesn't want to be president after all. Ah. Perhaps it is insecurity manifesting itself as self-sabotage. Really? Perhaps it is calculated, the ill-advised judgment of political consultants listening to focus groups filled with angry, frustrated, 18 to 24-year-old white men who relish such behavior. But his words are not the words of a president. I got the picture, I read it! You do yours too, buddy! If you're going to get into a big debate here today, it's going to get very interesting and very fun because somebody like you who doesn't know a damn thing about what you're talking about except to stand up and show off when the cameras are here. I've been here when the cameras aren't here, buddy, and done the work. I've been here when the cameras weren't here and did the work. So listen, you want to have that conversation? I'm happy to have it. I'm glad you had your day to show off. But we're the ones who are here to actually do the work. So turn around, get your 15 minutes of fame, and then maybe take your jacket off, roll up your sleeves, and maybe do something for the people of this state. So listen, you want to have that conversation later? I'm happy to have it, buddy. But until that time, sit down and shut up. Do we know who that was? This guy. <laughs> uh, no, no, I'm the governor, uh, yo, I'm the governor of New Jersey. I'm the, I'm the Doug. Chris, Krispy Kreme, Crisco Christy. Oh, that opened up my sinuses. <laughs> so what's the matter with this? Doesn't sound like a, a, a United States presidential candidate to me. President Ronald Reagan actually told a heckler to shut up once. Actually, it was candidate Reagan in the last days of his first presidential campaign. I remember that as a kid. Stressed out and exhausted, working around the clock, he lost it. But yep. his shut up was an aw, shut up. Yeah. Kind of like what Bobby Brady might say to Greg, or what Beaver Cleaver might say to Wally. To Wally, or Eddie Haskell. The subtext was, I'm tired. You're a pain in the neck. Just let me get through this. Since leaving office, Bill Clinton has also told the occasional heckler to shut up, usually along the lines of, now would you please shut up and let me finish? Yeah, that's a very polite way to say it. President Obama has been heckled more than any other president to date. People have objected to everything from his skin color to his health care law to his immigration policy, or lack thereof, health, to the Keystone XL pipeline. Health care law. So many happy poor people with Obamacare. <laughs> Though irritating to both the speaker and the audience, heckling is commonplace in politics. Obama has even been heckled by a congressman during a speech before a gen session of Congress. You lie! Remember? What was his name? Wilson? You lie! or lie, whatever it was. But part of being president is learning to live with criticism, even at inconvenient times. Part of being president is conducting oneself with the dignity appropriate to the office, particularly if one hasn't yet been elected to that office. Part of being president is being a role model, not taking the easy route, but demonstrating the right path. He's a role model, all right, a jelly roll. <laughs> Christie's response to the Belmar heckler was undignified. Yes, I know people love this stuff. Oh, he's so tough. Crude and crass, right? Oh, he speaks his mind. Oh, he's got spunk that... Oh, he there. doesn't take any nonsense. Yeah. To which I say, bull. He is the elected head of a state. His behavior is unbecoming, and it is certainly not presidential. 
The governor's behavior is demonstrative of enormous personal insecurity. Yeah, not to mention his enormous appetite. Christie, presumably, has the right to be at this press conference. The majority of the people there want him, want to hear him speak. The heckler has a point he wants to make. It is not the heckler's forum, and so what every president, a Democrat and Republican, has done, smile obligingly, nod at the heckler, make an on-the-cuff or off-the-cuff humorous comment that sets the audience at ease. <coughs> Subliminal message, folks, I'm still in charge here. And allow security to escort the heckler away from the speech. By engaging the heckler, Christie communicates that he is not confident in his authority, that he really isn't in charge, and by the way, things may get ugly. Christie's behavior is divisive. I don't know, Belmar heckler Jim Keady, but I do know that many victims of Superstorm Sandy object to the manner in which Christie's administration has distributed the Sandy relief money. Remember, the senior citizen development in unaffected Belleville built with Sandy money. Belleville wasn't touched. They got money. Oh, really? And there are other people's houses still untouched two years later. So I would say, yeah, I have a beef of where the money went and is going. So this 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 man is not just a heckler. He's he's he was making a very very valid point. Exactly. People are still waiting for their money, their Sandy relief money. That's correct. You know, Chris Christie, uh, he he does the same thing with his uh, his town hall meetings. He censors people that disagree with him. So this bullying is, uh, there's no excuse, I mean, for what happened. Because, you know, a town hall meeting is supposed to uh, back and forth. be a, a, a back and forth debate. And, you and people must, people are usually heard, citizens are heard at town hall meetings. Not a monologue. Right, it's not a monologue. Yeah. But he censors them. Delegitimizing those legitimate concerns, attacking and insulting the questioner, challenging Keaty, attacks and insults and challenges everyone who would like answers to those very legitimate questions. But who has enough decorum not to shut them, shout them, excuse me, at elected officials? Hmm. That's the only way you can be heard. Cut the crap. Yeah. At a place like that. Oh yeah. Forum, is you to know, shout. So, so before people out there in New Jersey uh, automatically um, categorize, what's his first name again? His first name is Jim. Wait. Jim Keady. Keady. K e a d y. K e a. D Y Jim Keady, before they categorize him as a troublemaker right. and just an ordinary heckler, he's a man with a very valid point that uh, just that made Chris Christie look bad because it was true what Jim Keady was saying. Correct. And of course, Chris Christie does not want to look bad in public. Finally, Christie's behavior reflects poorly on our state. Doesn't New Jersey already have enough of a bum rap? Isn't it already viewed throughout the country as a hotbed of thuggery, a bastion of bullying? Yeah, like, and, 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 and crude behavior like the Jersey Shore, uh, uh, the former show on uh, MTV, the Jersey Shore. I don't think this behavior helps our state. No. But for Christie's purposes, how does this persona help him 
with people in the heartland who when they see a merge sign on the highway actually put on their turn signal and gently glide into another lane rather than accelerating all the way to merge and cutting somebody off. People who live in states where people are genuinely nice. I understand that my standards of civility in public discourse may be different from yours and from the governor's. Heckling is uncivilized, disruptive, and is always the avenue of a group or individual without power. There's the point, isn't it? Whose voice is not being heard who doesn't have a place at the policy-making table. And so, while annoying, we can kind of understand and maybe forgive someone who is both so frustrated and so passionate, but so ineffectual. But we cannot excuse or understand or condone a governor with enormous power whose voice is heard throughout the country, who sits at the head of the policy-making table for acting as if he himself is a heckler. No, well, Chris Christie obviously did not debate this man, uh, Jim Cady. He did not answer Jim Cady's uh, uh, question or, 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 or reply to his issue at all. He, he immediately tried to censor Jim Cady and shut him up. Oh well, uh, he did say, we could have this conversation later. Yeah, sure. Oh yeah, right. What are you going to talk to the, to the governor later? Oh, he'll be shift, he'll be, you know, shifted into his black uh, sedan before you even know it. He'll be out of there. Out of there. There is no later. That's correct. You know, uh, uh, <clears throat> there is no later. And, um, and he said something like, uh, I don't know if Jim Keating mentioned, let's, let's have this discussion over dinner. And then Christie says, I have a thousand things to do, and having dinner with you will be it's not 1,001. Yeah. yeah. It'll be at, at, the, at the bottom of my list. Because you know why? Because then Mr. Keating will know how the governor eats. And then he'll have another beef. <laughs> yeah, no pun intended. Beef. Real food for real people. Remember that commercial? Yeah. Today, Where's the beef? Today I am having ribeye steak. Very large and thick ribeye steak with uh, uh, baked russet potatoes with sour cream and chives. Yes. And I'm not and I'm not chive talking. That's I'm not right. chiving you. I'm yeah, not chive talking. You want a cheap uh, bunch of chives. Yeah, we saw the video. No, I got a better steak. That wasn't a ribeye. I know. That was a sh that, that was, was a, a shell, shell steak. Yeah. A mere shell. I'm talking about the chives. A mere shell of what it used to be. Oh, the oh the huge potato. Yeah. <laughs> the huge potato. The huge potato I had loaded with sour cream up to here and chives. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, there were two potatoes on that plate. One potato, two potatoes. Yeah, there were two potatoes. You're right. <laughs> there were. I do. Hey, I, I need my, my high-octane fuel. I, I work out very hard, uh, six days a week. Continuing in the Christie mode. <laughs> Figuratively speaking, whether it be a club in a bag or a bat in his hand, Governor Christie is a belligerent bully and should never be in an elevated position where he has a bomb in a silo. Yeah, you need a fork, you need a hydraulic forklift to elevate Chris Christie. <laughs> Boy, the jokes are just flowing today. If he has to respond with rancor to a soccer player, a senator or any New Jersey resident with whom he disagrees, what would you anticipate on a national level when he has to deal with international politics? Can we, again, uh, uh, this is an aside here, can we both, can we see Putin 
and Christie together? Hey, maybe a cage match. Huh? I guarantee you, Vladimir Putin is in, in a lot better physical condition than Chris Christie. And he'll show you too by taking off his shirt. Yep. Oh yeah. <laughs> nah, he's got a good build. Vladimir Putin will kick Christie's ass. Yeah. Unless Christie just manages to trip him and sit on him. In New Jersey, a strong position is taken against bullying in schools by children. Let's extend that to public forums for adults. Bully for you, Governor, but not for me. Am I the only New Jersey resident who was embarrassed by Governor Christie's rude and bully pulpit behavior? The short video clip played on every news station the other day was an insult to every state resident. Our governor, while in Belmar, New Jersey, faced to address the issue about the slow distribution of funds to Sandy victims. On the second anniversary, he told the constituent to sit down and shut up. Homeowners in my neighborhood after Sandy were pleading with local officials all week long to lower the water level of Woodcliffe Lake. But an order to do so was needed from the state. Unfortunately, no one was at the helm. By the time the order to lower the lake came, it was too late. There was no longer enough time to lower the lake. Because of the rate of water flow, it can take days to lower the lake. What is the governor doing now to finish the job of rebuilding after Sandy? Now, when the cameras are not around, the New Jersey Shore, he is out on the campaign trail, is stumping for his own political ambition. He's stronger than the storm. Yeah, Chris Christie is stronger than the storm. Especially if they use him as a seawall. <laughs> <clears throat> he could be a berm. What's a berm? Lay down. You know, the humps on the shore. To keep yeah. the water from coming inland. Yeah, he'll definitely hold the seawater in. Out. Hold it out. Well, well, we don't have time for another one, especially this particular one I have picked out here. It's long, right? Yeah. So, how, so yeah. how much time do we have before lunch? About five minutes. So we can yeah, and is yak about Mr. Uh, Christi. Uh oh. Well, we, we're going to have to yak about another moment or two. Yeah. Oh, uh, all right. We'll, we'll yak. We'll banter about Mr. Christie. Oh God. He was reelected. That's the amazing part. That's great. He was reelected. Mm -hmm. He was reelected after people were profusely complaining about him. And uh, Barbara Bono, she sounded great, fantastic in in the two debates with him, and she lost. Uh, 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 New Jersey Democrats turned their back on her. Traitors. Traitors and, and sold out to Christie. I don't know why, but there's got to be political corruption involved when it comes to New uh, Jersey. Yeah, that's New what the George Washington Bridge thing was all about, wasn't it? Political corruption. Yeah. Hey, if you don't endorse me, you're going to pay. That's what that was all about. The mayor of uh, Fort Lee. He didn't endorse Christie. Time for a little traffic problems on the George Washington Bridge. Isn't that like blackmail? No kidding. It's also got another name. Extortion? Corruption. You know? Yeah, he's... The Attorney General, I hope, is, you know, 
gets his ass moving here with this case. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's not just New Jersey. Uh, uh, it, it, this type of mentality, right wing mentality of corruption and greed, is all over the state. Uh, what about all uh, over the nation? What about in the Carolinas with um, with with fracking? You know, I mean, uh, uh, they they just don't care about the people of those states drinking toxic water. They don't care. They they. They don't even like to spend the money to clean it up. They just want to make make their money off of it and hey, hell, we, hell with we, the population. Didn't we learn from Love Canal? They didn't want to clean that up either. Who ended up cleaning it up? If it's indeed cleaned up today. We did, the taxpayer. The corporation is never penalized. Never. Because and, they create jobs, don't they? That's yeah, just... Republican hogwash. Ah, I thought demand created jobs. Should you know if 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 I tomorrow am Apple computer and I make an a, a iPad number ninety two and I put it in the warehouse and I'm ready to sell millions and I got no buyers. How do I provide jobs? Huh? Yeah, I, 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 you, you posted something on our um, uh, uncensored, hard-hitting truth Facebook group about you know what, where jobs really come from. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you have to have a demand, uh, and you have to have customers That's that are willing correct. to buy it. That's great. You know, which is otherwise nobody's going to invest in in, 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 in in producing the product, warehousing it, and selling it. Just don't happen. It's not the capitalistic way. Okay. Yeah, it's like, um, for instance, okay. Obviously, times are extremely tough. So, what do people usually do in their spending habits and in their budget? The first thing they do is they cut out luxuries. Oh, that's for sure. Let's take an industry like fine jewelry. Under during bad times, people are not going to spend money on fine jewelry. So who 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 gets hurt? Well, the people in the fine jewelry industry and the retail uh, associates, clerks that work um, for fine jewelry uh, departments and mm -hmm. stores. They get laid off. They get less hours, or and or laid off. Yeah, because uh, how many? You know, I mean, there's only so many uh, rich people in the world in the nation that can buy that crap. Right. The same thing goes for. Uh, so if they're hurting, people, and we're hurting. People that assume that the rich are part of the American consumer uh, category. They're not. They're not. No. They're not the true. They consumer. save. They invest. They they do other things with their money. They do not just buy product. Yeah. Unless it's a yacht and they can afford it, they'll buy a yacht. And but my, that's only one sale. And my answer to tea baggers on on the group, uh, the the spending habits of the wealthy are are very different. And very minute compared to the spending habits yeah. of uh, mainstream America. Consumers, that means the mainstream and the uh, poor, are like almost 75% of the economy. The consumer, the buyer. Yeah. You know, and he's not buying yachts. No. No, he's okay. not. He's buying toilet paper. Okay. I wonder if they, uh, the Republicans, consider that a luxury item. <laughs> Toilet paper to wipe your ass with. Well, well, the, they maybe we should go out. The poor should go out and, and and wipe their asses with leaves. They they're under they're already under the impression that the poor uh, shouldn't really have uh, air conditioners or, or refrigerators uh, or refrigerators and things. Definitely like that. not a car. Oh, God forbid they have a car. Or, or a portable washing machine in their home. No, they can't. They oh, don't have a car. How do they get to find work? There you go. 
if they're poor and they don't have internet access, that too. And uh, the fact that companies you cannot um, apply for a job by by uh, in person or telephone. You have to do it online now. No walk in the door. You know they. All right, let's say people. And there's only so many uh, uh, PCs uh, uh, available in the public library. I mean, if if the poor, I'm just saying the poor usually don't do not have the money for uh, internet access, and they'll be, they'll be forced to go to the public library. Well, there's only so many computers in the public library. It's as Andrew Carnegie said. The to apply luxuries for job, yeah. of yesterday are now the necessities of today. All right. That's how it is. That's it's called. Uh, God forbid. Now here's a word that the conservatives uh, get the, uh, their hair on fire with. It's evolution. Okay. We evolve. Higher standards of living. Whatever. No, it's just yeah. like kids today have evolved uh, uh, in in a high tech age and you know the toys that that I had as a child are vastly different from the toys back in a box <laughs> it was the pop goes the weasel yeah <laughs> pop goes the weasel and then they come would come out I mean I had etch and sketch and you know Mr. Potato Head and uh, Mr. Ba I never had a Mr. Potato and I never had Lincoln Logs, and I never had an erector set. And I had uh, an erection set. Erector set. Oh. And, and and I had Hot Wheels. A red wagon. I, I had wanted, a wagon. Wanted one so bad. I had a, a flexible flyer wood and steel sh sled for the winter. That's when we used to have real winters. Yeah, I had a, I had a beautiful, with nice wood grain. I had I had a beautiful sled. Although I did have a Lionel train. With no, a figure I eight track. I couldn't afford setup. that. Yeah, but I had. I no, had. I had that. But that's all we knew. It's that's relative. Correct. That's correct. Now the kids would like be hysterical, laughing at us if if we showed our toys that we had. You know, but we were outside. You see, communing with nature. I was out fishing with my friends at at the local uh, brook. You know, and playing uh, softball and. Things of that nature, and you know, uh, in the woods looking for critters. I was outside. I was riding my bike all day. Remember the Velveeta box? I wasn't doing playing video games or texting in in the house. Remember the Velveeta boxes? I hate Velveeta the, cheese. Velveeta is crap. It's toxic, processed garbage. Yes, I remember. Well, we used to eat it when I was about ten years old. Whatever. I used to make. Buses from the box. How about that? You had to use your imagination. Yeah, make toys from it. To make toys. Kids yep. kids would make all kinds of things from boxes. Yep. Now, you know, that they're, they're homes to the homeless. You know, not, Well, not a Velveeta box. Not a Velveeta box. A refrigerator box. Unless you're an Oompa Loompa. <laughs> you know, from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Yeah, well, what I mean is we used our imagination because we had to. We weren't playing Angry Birds. But we didn't know any better because we didn't know about things like, we didn't uh, have them. there was no computer, um, um, well, for the public. There was no computer for the we public. We made our own, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, Williamsport, they hold that. We had uh, hobbies. Bo that box, uh, the, the, the race. Soapbox derby. derby. Soapbox Derby. We made our own soapbox. But we used to call them go-karts. That's what we made. We made them. With wood and the wheels from uh, with yeah. the wheels taken from uh, 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 baby carriages and but, stuff. Like but that. just see, you notice how different each one was. They, yeah. Every everyone had its own look. They were yeah, all well, we custom. Had no, we had no bodies to them. I mean, no. it was wood. Yeah. And then the axles, and then the rope steering. Yeah. yeah. But they all they were all custom made, and they were all different. Yeah. You know, and they're unique and. And it used gravity to make it go because you would go down a hill, right? And in Hazleton, where I used to live, they had big hills. I do admit the, ki the kids today have very cool skateboards. They call them longboards, 
it looks like a like a miniature a surfboard yeah with with special wheels like that are have a wider axle and they they go faster and i've seen amazing things on a, on a skateboard today i've seen a a, a guy a middle-aged man in jersey city he was flying I saw an old guy he was flying on his skateboard I saw an old guy doing that stuff and he was and, and it's like still doing tricks i'm like wow look look at this guy go Look at him. He's like swerving in and out of traffic. But anyway, we're going to yeah. take a break now. Uh, uh, you know, it's but getting back to the group, it's funny how uh, these tea baggers. I'm sure most of them do not have a pot to piss in, but and they vote for people that are only for the rich. But they have an answer for everything. Yes, they do. They believe in T the trickle down. Point. It's not really an answer. It's a talking they point. They believe in the trickle down economics theory. They believe that there's jobs out there and, and that if you're on welfare, you're lazy. Yeah. They believe all this crap that they hear. If you want a better job, go out and get one. Oh, yeah. Just go out and get one. Yeah. That's all it takes. If you don't want a minimum wage job, uh, educate yourself. And they always Perfect. tell, and the, the right wing, the teabaggers always tell stories of people that started off with nothing. Nothing. Nothing in their pockets, and they worked them their way up. They're self-made. Hey, listen, nobody in America is 100% self-made without breaks. Everybody you, got a break. How does anybody, without nothing, get the investment capital to build what he wants to build. You mean if he's an entrepreneur and he wants to start a profession yeah. or a business? You he need capital. To, he can go to 1,872 banks. You know what, gonna, what they're going to tell him? You have collateral? You bye, bye. Bye, bye. You don't have collateral? We can't give you the loan. That's correct. So when anybody ever says that, that's a bunch of bullshit. And if it's true also, I'd like to see... I'd like to see anybody start a, 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 a porn magazine today with five hundred dollars. You can't do it, you know. Well, I mean, is, this is the story that uh, Pan, uh, uh, Playboy was started like that, or or or, or Hustler, with five hundred bucks only. Yeah, I doubt it. I doubt it too. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yes. Oh, we have a new blog page because I've been hearing so much about blogs lately about how people have uh, actually become popular in, in, in voicing their opinion on their own blog page that I, uh, I decided to make a, a newsletter censored blog page. It, it's over on Tripod and uh, you know it's I used one of the templates which is all right you know but uh, yeah yeah cause, and, and they allow you uh, to put meta tag codes so uh, your blog appears depending on uh, the nature of the blog and you know you have many templates that you can use different themes you can customize your blog you know so I just simply copied and paste a lot of the, the uh, writings that we already had you know so anyway uh, we're gonna take a lunch break and uh, we will be joined right now by our voiceover artist William H. Moore the third and he will do the promo and then we will return to the second half of this uh, election week show and uh, Day of the Dead. Happy, happy Day of the Dead. November the 2nd, 2014. Hi, I'm William Moore. Wake up, people, because the truth is often, very often, a very, very hard pill to swallow. Hi, this is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. 
We're living in the end times, so you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Hey, listen, for the real hard-hitting truth, you need Newsletter Censored. And now, back to the show. Bye-bye. Okay, we're back. Thank you very much, William H. Morrow, for doing excellent promo, as always. We will now return to the balance of this show for this week, uh, Election Day week, and the Day of the Dead, which is today, November 2nd, 2014. Today's birders can use radar images accessed through smartphones to find out the best places to go birding. Birders, you mean bird watchers? Birders don't even need cumbersome field guides anymore. It's all on their phones. Really? Which will even provide a variety of bird calls to help identify a feathered friend that can be heard but not seen. Bird calls from your smartphone. Unbelievable. The Bob White. Yeah. And to think that John James Audubon had to shoot his birds just to see them up close. Autobahn was a, a man's last name. That's his organization, the Autobahn, which is supposed to protect birds, but he had to shoot them. The Autobahn Society, oh to yeah. To paint them, he had to shoot them. And they, and they named, and they had to name it after him, the guy who was really, oh he was a bird lover all right, all right. he loved to, to roast them and eat them. This is changing the game said David Olapuma, director of New Jersey Audubon's Cape May Bird Observatory. Observatory. The latest technology is part of what draws hundreds of birders to Cape May Convention Hall every October during New Jersey Audubon's Cape May Autumn Birding Festival. Mm -hmm. The oldest birding festival in North America began on Friday and runs through today with field trips, speakers, book signings, workshops, and other events. It also brings vendors hawking. The latest in burning optics and high-tech gadgets. La Puma! Here's some complaints about how technology has changed the birding. But he argues that such devices used in a responsible way are fantastic sources. Technology may have moved some hobbies inside, but he notes that the birder still has to get out there and see the bird. It's hard to argue with La Puma when he displays a slow motion video of a rare whiskered turn on his phone. It's crisp, clear, and in living color, showing things other birders might miss. Back in the day, they used a shotgun to identify the bird. A bird in the hand is not the same as a bird in the bush. Ugh. It's dead, La Puma said. Or how many birds could fill a, a bucket of Popeye's chicken? You only get three pieces. No, not and if Popeye's you get, chicken. Not if you get a bucket. 
Oh, a buck again, the, uh, the four dollar ninety nine cent one, you get three. Side of mashies and the hell's that? another one of your choice, right? Oh, biscuit. A biscuit. Yeah, you get you get buttermilk biscuit. They're very tasty, by the way. That's it. Oh, burning me. used to be a solitary sport, oh. like hunting. Uh huh. Practitioners would come in from the field. Have to convince everybody they just saw a rare bird. <laughs> Back then, if a rare bird showed up, you'd find out about it in our annual report. Now there's plenty of electronic evidence and a social network that probably means everybody else joined the birder in the field. Once that rare bird was sighted, within hours of the first whiskered turn sighting this month about a hundred birders were looking for it when the first birding festival was held in cape may in 1946 it was hard to find an accurate weather report lapuma can now follow bird movements on his phone using the color to figure out their speeds and the lines from storm fronts to determine where they will come down for the night. It's all on my fingertips. We're one degree away from having real-time bird migration forecasting. <clears throat> there are some detractors like Pete Dunn, a former bird observatory director, birding author, self-described Luddite. The hell's that? A Luddite is one who doesn't believe in technology of today, etc. He's uh, like a caveman. Oh, like, like the Amish? No. Worse than that? It's just that the person is not involved in the technology of today. It's not religious or anything of that nature. They just don't do it. Some people just don't do it. They don't want to learn it. They, they do. They want They're to. Luddites. They want to remain computer illiterate and technology illiterate. They want. They're to, still living in the past. Yeah, that's okay, true. That's, yeah, that's true. I, um, um, my mother has this friend who was an, uh, she, her whole life she was an old-fashioned bookkeeper. She refuses to to learn. Uh, to use a uh, Excel uh, calculator. No, I mean like no. uh, Excel. Yeah, it's Excel. Yeah, Excel. Yeah. She's still putting it in the book. That's why she she ne never got hired anymore. Exactly. Well, <laughs> right, come on. She's a dinosaur. Anyway, he doesn't like technology at all. He doesn't tweet. He's not on Facebook. He argues it will ultimately destroy birding. <laughs> you take a picture. Go to your home computer to ID it. A hundred years of field identification goes out the window. Yeah. I like looking at birds in real time without the gadgetry. <laughs> the social media aspect also goes against why Dunn embraced birding years ago. I got into birding to hide out from people, he said. But new gadgetry is smaller and in many ways performs better close-up shots used to involve lugging a large heavy lens into the field. Bird observatory naturalist Kathy Horn swears by her $70 adapter that allows her to turn what she is viewing in her scope into a picture on her smartphone. Mm, are you towards the end of this? Yes, this is very interesting. Okay, continue. You see, folks, this is what happens when a technology buff butts up against reality. <laughs> now, I'll bet you, I'll bet you that this same <clears throat> technology buff is going to say, our kids are too much into these things here, blah, 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 blah. 
Right? True or not true? I like technology. But yet inverting. But I like You don't want to go out in the field. But I like nature too. Well then why would you prefer the technology over going out in the field? Well you can't compare the two. Going out in the field and getting fresh air and, and looking looking for live animals and you know and, and, and uh, videoing them and or, stepping in their shit and uh, how can you compare that to being on a smartphone using um, uh, your telephoto lens on your good digital camera and taking photos and well well that part is okay yeah for you know to oh, preserve, yeah. uh, to uh, preserve. To, you mean locating them via the smartphone and using bird calls off of the smartphone I think is great. It's an adjunct if you use it as an adjunct but going out to the field there's nothing like that. Oh yeah you can't compare with yeah. you know like being with nature. Use the technology but don't abuse it. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's like comparing a, a, a real live warm breathing pet having a pet that's real composed to uh, one that you shot compared so that no. you could check it out no, no, I wasn't going to say that compared to having one of those little computerized ele electronic virtual pets you know you know when you Wilhelm can't Reich, compare the two when Wilhelm Reich was doing his work on protozoa and things of that nature um, <clears throat> he always complained about the fact that when when uh, allopathic medicine or etc they kill the thing that they wish to examine in other words they kill the cell and put it on a uh, uh, a slide slide and then they color it they dye it and then they examine it whereas he wanted to examine it while it was living in its own environment right That's what I'm trying to point out. That's all. Yeah. Use the technology. There's no problem with that. I'm not a Luddite. Well, the, the uh, oh, I know that. But you, don't I, abuse. I know you're you're very computer literate. Uh, uh, no, no doubt about that. Um, I guess it's like um, the doctors of the past actually knew and learned about homeopathic medicine. Yeah. Today it's just they're just a that's like. Glorified yeah. drug dealers. That's like a Chinese doctor. He can he can tell by hundreds a hundred uh, 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 of your um, when he takes your uh, your heart rate. The, no, the uh, what pulse. He can he can d d divine between a hundred pulses what the problem is. They, he, they also a Chinese doctor who is trained also in uh, in herbal medicine can look at the iris of your eye that too and he can see he can die he can use that in his um, diagnosis yeah how your eyes look how the iris looks but yeah. today what do they do they take a blood sample and they send it out to the laboratory and then the laboratory sends it back with an explanation Right, and they read off of that. It's like with auto mechanics, you know, the auto mechanics, auto mechanics of the past would uh, use their their good judgment yeah, based they didn't on. Know that, they didn't need that book. What the hell's the name book. of that book? What book? No, that they, gigantic book. No, they use uh, 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 they hook up your car's computer to this diagnostic device. Oh, that's today, yeah. You know, and they get a they when there's a problem with the car, it creates a code, and they yeah. get the code off they get the a readout. A readout. They get the code yeah. off off the car's computer, and uh, and they charge you like ninety bucks to do that instead of the old-fashioned mechanic who opened up the hood of your car and actually looked and listened ah, and made the diagnosis. Listening is important. Made made the diagnosis the by you know hands-on examination. To diagnose your car's problem. That's it. So in other words, <coughs> there are some technologies that actually are making us dumber. Yes. There's good points to it and bad points. Like, she said <coughs> the phone focuses a picture better than she could do herself. The yeah. photography in the new field guides 
is so good it helps birders accurately identify what they are seeing. Roger Horn, Kathy's husband and a naturalist for the Bird Observatory, said looking at a bird in real time is great, but then it can be quickly gone. Horn said, digiscoping or taking pictures from the sp spotting scope has helped him learn more about birds. Birders today really have an advantage with all the advanced technology. Now, I'm going to give this to you because there's a picture here. Great of, horned owl. This is Houdini. Harry Houdini? A great horned owl. Oh. At New Jersey Audubon's bird show on Saturday. Houdini was hit by a car. Oh. Houdini was hit by a car and, and is is being treated now? Well, it looks like he might be okay, but He's maybe sick. he can't fly anymore. Who knows? But it's big. Oh, he's, he's, it's a big, look at the talons on this great horned owl. Yeah. Houdini's a big, it's a big boy. I don't know if you can see it, but, uh, look, down look, a little, please. look how big Houdini okay, is. Okay, right about there. Compared Take to. Take it back a little. Okay, right Look how way. Houdini is right next to the woman. How big this, this owl, great yeah. horned owl is. He's like one, one third of her body. Yeah, he's huge. <laughs> You know, we also have bald eagles here in New Jersey, but, um... What, they don't use Rogaine? Yeah, no, they don't. Anoxidil? Yeah, it's cool, he's huge. But, um, like Kenny Banyan said on Seinfeld, Hey, I've been working out, I'm huge! That's why they... The I'm suit, cut, man, I'm cut, the, I'm uh, bust! The uh, Armani suit didn't fit him anymore. He, uh, he gave it away, then he wanted it back, you know. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, well, j just like um, uh, the smartphone and texting is making young people very antisocial, they do not have the skills or the ability to deal one-on-one -on -one with people, face-to-face, -face, except for people they that are in their clique that they know very well but even with them they're always texting you know instead of like being aware of your environment what's around you uh, I mean look when I'm driving is a lot different than when I have to walk several blocks to get somewhere because when I walk I actually see things things that I never see when I'm driving mm -hmm. like you know, the people in my neighborhood, what they have uh, in front of and, ar and around their house, you know, things that I never knew people had. You know, I, I saw one house that had, a uh, large house that had so many solar panels, uh, the whole entire mm. roof was covered. I, I never seen that before. In Lodi here? Oh, there's many homes in our, in our town wow. here that have solar panels. Great. I, I mean, you would think solar panels would work better in, in, in the south, but uh, uh, look at Germany. Germany is quickly becoming totally um, independent of fossil fuels. America does not like that. They're number one in, in, the, in the green movement. They don't like that, America. America don't like that. No, America. Mer America, America likes uh, to be dependent on big oil. Mm -hmm. You know, and Germany is setting the example, and, and, and also the fact that uh, there's been a lot of uh, information about how many European countries uh, offer um, free education, free university education, as well as health care. And the, and as the, we once did. The minimum wage in many of these countries are over $20 an hour for f even fast food workers. Burger King, McDonald's, you know, like Denmark, and, and there are other countries that it's over $20 an hour, the minimum wage. Well, yeah. And they're crying, uh, the Republicans are bitching and moaning about $10.10 an hour. Yes, they are, because that cuts, cuts into the profit margin of their big constituents. Oh, the poor rich bastards uh, cannot be uh, 
uh, uh, cannot be worth uh, five billion dollars. They they maybe they can only be worth four billion dollars. Oh, that's really I, my heart bleeds for them. As well, it should. If you wish to be in politics. And what about what if you're in politics and you're like Jesse Ventura and you say screw you, I'm going to do the right thing. Well. Theoretically, you won't last too long. Is Mr. Ventura in politics today? No, he only stood. No. He only stood in one term in, in Minnesota for one term. Correct. I wonder what happened. I don't know, but the point is that without the support of the crooks and etc., you ain't going to get very far. <clears throat> That's the reality. Yeah. Until the system's changed. That's why you don't see independent candidates uh, invited to the televised debates. That's right. <coughs> you know, when I was a kid and you had the uh, League of Women Voters running the debates, you had a candidate, a, an independent candidate. Correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't wasn't Ross Perot at... at at a televised debate or... In Anderson, John Anderson. Yeah. Those be, yes. Yes. Is that Ralph Nader? H. Ross Pro there, great <coughs> man, Ralph Nader. Yes. Once upon a time. Yeah. Until the Republicans and the corporate cast kisser Democrats got in there and just, made it all about themselves. Just, just kept it two-party system. That's good. One Democrat debating one Republican. That's good. And no independents. Right. And then... And then all the questions are softballs. Oh yeah, they are. No knucklers. No spit. Not, no no spitballs. Ball, spitballs, knuckleballs. No, none of that shit. They're underhand, are thrown, a, a slowly thrown, underhanded softballs. And um, is this why, um, like mainstream media and the mainstream press, does not give you? the real no, deep, deep news that the internet gives you? No. All the shenanigans that are being pulled on the American people, that's online. You know, yeah, that's but not, the, the uh, point of it is online stuff is all divided up. It's not like Channel 2, Channel 4, Channel 7, which has the most viewers. Right. When you got something on cable or uh, for instance, Huffington Post. Supposing there was a great truth teller show on channel number 752. Right. On your cable box. How many people would go that high on the dial? Yeah, exactly. They, they'll listen to uh, MSNBC. Yes. Which is channel 23 here. They'll, but, but, yeah, but MSNBC is, is well known. Yeah. And then you got the other thing, the pricing thing. Uh, basic television, 247, you know, up to channel, uh, what is it up to, the basic one, with no, not, not cable, not basic cable, talk no, about, uh, 13, know. channel 13, that's it, that's it, that's all you got, 247, a 9, 11, 13, and that's it, then you got basic cable, uh, hundreds of channels, which gives you a couple of UHFs, up to a thousand. No, not basic cable. It's only like 50 channels or something like that. You mean that you actually get? That you actually get. Then you got the family. Yeah, the silver thing. package. The family yeah, package. You got is it? Then you got 600 the, or so channels. Yeah, you got a deluxe soup to nuts package and you pay more money and yeah, you see exactly. get more channels. Exactly. But the thing is that uh, you just don't get the real deep news. <laughs> in the mainstream media and press. You, you don't. You get softball thrown at you. You know, like uh, the Huffington Post has many deep political articles online. And the Daily Coast, people like that. Then you got Pacman, then you got Sam Cedar, then you got uh, Jesse Ventura, then you got um, uh, the Young Turks. Yeah, the Young et Turks. Et cetera, et cetera. You got all these shows, but they got divided audiences. You know, nobody's watching them all. No. Well, John Stewart, I forgot that too. Stephen John Colbert. Stewart, Stephen yeah. Colbert, for crying out loud, you got to pay for the show. Huh? He's on HBO. 
Oh, he moved? No, excuse me, that's John Oliver. John Oliver. Oh, yeah, Stephen, yeah, Colbert, Stephen Colbert is on com a Comedy Central. I think he's off. You know, he's taking yeah. over for, for Letterman in 2015. That's what I think is going he's on. He's taking he's, over for the Letterman show. He's off. But but John Oliver moved to HBO. He's got a show on there. So, I mean, how much truth and, and stuff you're going to get to people when you got all this choice, you got all this crap thrown at you. You can't look at everything. People don't have the time to to yeah. to know and, and, and to even know who these people are and and where they are and what they represent. And then you got the radio stations. Somebody like Mike Malloy. He's in Georgia. He's not syndicated like Rush Limbaugh. So only the people in Georgia are going to hear him, or like, uh, what's that woman used to be on WWRL? Forget her name. When they had all the shows on there with Al Franken and, and, right. and oh, all uh, the progressive shows. Oh, uh, uh, um, uh, Randy Rhodes? Randy Rhodes. So Randy Rhodes is in Florida. So what the hell do we hear from Florida? From a land-based station? Zero. Right, but then you you have the overnight graveyard shift talk shows that are that are coast to coast. There are like one of them was on Jesse Ventura's uh, new show on Aura TV. He's supposed to he's he's on the West Coast, L.A., and he has a nationwide. Uh, uh, oh, it's nationwide. Well, but it's but it's overnight. It's like <coughs> you know, it's, yeah. it's it's graveyard shift. Uh, what the hell is it again? Yeah, how yeah, many start. people watch, listen to that? <coughs> Excuse me. Truck drivers, uh, you know, people, people... The poor. People that don't have to Who get don't up, have to get up for a job. They don't have day. to get up early for anything. They, could, they can listen to it. And then they're allowed... Um, they're allowed to... Um, to reveal more controversial subject matter. Because they're overnight. The late uh, night time slot, late shift, late night time slots, uh, they're allowed more. Yeah. So anyway, um, but I wanted to just make a point about mainstream media and the press not giving you the real s solid, deep truth about what's going on uh, with the country and politics. So also, but they don't. No, they're they're corporate ass kisses. But anyway, uh, so that that's it. The unless you have a spawn. <clears throat> satanic a temple has submitted a satanic coloring book and two fact sheets to schools in Orange County, Florida, requesting permission to hand them out to students in January. The coloring book features cartoon children performing satanic rituals and drawing pentagrams in school. Along with a word search for words such as acceptance and friends and a maze to reach the necrom de necromicon. Oh, necrom is death, dead, right? Yeah. A fabled occult spell book. Ooh. The children in the book wear satanic symbols on their shirts and spread anti-bullying and religious tolerance messages. A coloring page features a girl reading in a study filled with satanic art. Books and symbols. Mm -hmm. A connect the dots sheet creates a pentagram. Orange County Public Schools Council Woody Rodriguez said legal staff would review the materials as it did for an atheist group but that distributed materials to Orange students. No timeline for a decision was set. 
The school board has discussed changing its policy that shows and allows the distribution of religious materials on tables inside high schools, but no action has been taken. And none are planned. We definitely, definitely will not be distributing those materials until we have a work session on that issue. A Bible distribution by a group called World Changers of Florida, most recently held in January, set off a series of lawsuits by an atheist group seeking to stop the practice. The Satanic Temple is a loosely organized national group that has formed an alliance with atheist groups to make a statement against the practice of allowing the Bible distributions. The same group has gotten much sought after publicity by trying to get a statue of goat idol Baphomet Baphomet Baphomet, yeah installed in the Oklahoma State Capitol. I read an article where um, more people are turning their back away from Christianity than ever before nowadays. Well, I have a little problem. Becoming pagan, uh, Wiccans, you know, pagans. If you believe in Satan, you must believe in God. Yeah. So how do you reconcile that? Since God is more powerful than Satan. Well, if you if you acknowledge the spiritual being of of, of either side, you ha you have to you automatically acknowledge both of them. Correct. But there is one that's more powerful. So well, yeah. Why would you worship the less powerful? And one is uh, omnipotent and om omnipresent. Well, I don't know about that. Is he and on? will punish Mr. Satan when the time is right. Right. Okay. has that ability too. Yeah. To be sure, if our materials are consistent with their standards, they can't simply deny our literature because of its religious viewpoint. Said a Satanic Temple spokesman who goes by the name of Lucian Graves. If the open forum for distribution goes forward, the Satanic Temple will be there, he said. The Satanic Temple supports social justice and sees Satan as the eternal rebel against the ultimate tyrant, God. Mm -hmm. It if you wanted to. Hang yeah, on. no, that's it. That's it. This, that's a wrap. Not that there were, were rappers here, but that's a wrap. Um, thank you. Mexican rap? Spanish rap? Uh, you, well, the rap is a, um, a, uh, an extra, hold on. A wrap is an extra large jumbo sized tortilla. A flour tortilla. I, I prefer the corn tortilla, but I'm, I'm afraid it might be GMO corn. And it's very convenient because, like a a burrito or um, a quesadilla or whatever enchilada, you can put your ingredients inside and, and roll it up. Or a fish taco. Yeah, any anything. You can make a sand, you know, a, a sandwich very easily. Nothing falls out. Because, because the wrap is large, you know, but I, I'm, real, I'm concerned about what kind of flour is used. All right, say, say goodbye to the gourd. This is the last gourd I will be showing. So we were done. This is not a gourd that uh, you will be bored with. You won't be bored with this gourd if you're female. But anyway, thank you for joining us for uh, this week's uh, Uncensored Hard-Hitting Truth. Um, 
I got a um, ladies and gentlemen. A bit of a brain freeze. He had a senior moment. No. Uh, what kind of tea are you drinking? I am so tired for from last night's you got an extra performance. An extra hour of sleep. Left. Plus, I had to edit the video and upload it, and then I lost internet connection last night, so I had to shut down everything. For some reason, I lost complete across the board the internet, internet connection. The wind. It could be the, the winds of November that took me offline. So everything, but, but I, I already edited and made the shows, okay, made the, the final product. So all I had to do was upload them this morning. But anyway, uh, thank you for joining us for Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth. Um, election Day week, happy Day of the Dead. Make sure you, you do not act like you're dead this Tuesday. Please get out and vote. It's extremely, extremely important that we elect more Democrats than Republicans. If you happen to be poor or part of mainstream, it's, 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 it's like life and death for you guys. If you're rich and you're one of those stingy, greedy bastards that does not want to pay any taxes at all, and and, and you, you have yours and you don't care what other people have, and you have no compassion for the poor, well, then I guess you're going to vote Republican, as usual. But if not, get to the polls. S senior citizens, get to the polls. Disabled people, young people, women, Many people, people of color, people. Yeah, minorities, every, every group that is benefited by a liberal politician or a Democrat, vote, get there, show up, because this news that I, I've uh, encountered that uh, they feel that only 50% of the population is going to show up. <laughs> if that. That's horrible. That's an all-time low, isn't it? Uh, no, but uh, at these midterm elections, Democrats always don't come out. See, Democrats. For president. Democrats don't come out. They don't want to get involved. They're, they're, uh, they're not. It's not as important for them. Like my mother says, I don't feel like voting. What am I going to do? You think things are going to change? Just, you know what? Voting is very powerful. Right now, uh, that's the privilege. Only, that's the only method you have to try to get change. Is voting. That's the only method. Then when you vote in enough people right. who believe as you do, then you can change the system. Yeah. So Otherwise. that's the only way. Yeah. Well, uh, but of course the, the right-wingers, the Republicans, are fanatical enough to make it their business to vote. And please, I don't want to hear any Republican referring to himself as a Christian uh, after this Tuesday. Oh, without a doubt. Okay. Christian, they don't know the God of the Bible. That's correct. They don't know anything about what's inside the Bible. That's correct. And it, it, it's it's so funny and convenient that they automatically make God a conservative like them. Exactly. Because we have the scripture to prove that God is definitely guaranteed. He is definitely not a right-wing conservative. He's not political, right. but he is much closer to being a liberal than a conservative. You know, character structure. Well, he does the right wise. thing. Doing the right thing just happens to be... A liberal thing. A liberal thing. Isn't that something? Yeah. You know, doing the right thing. So take care, people.
and think about it long and hard today uh, for those that are watching and listening to this show before uh, Tuesday, November the 4th, 2014. For those of you that are viewing this before that day, just think about how important it is to you that the Republicans do not win re-election and that the people regain power of Washington. People power. All right, so long. So long. This has been a Mega Life 21.